What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Cool Colas here, and you are now tuning into a new video on my channel. But before we get on to the topic for today, I would love for you to hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the bell icon so you get notifications for whenever I come out with new content on this channel. And then when you are finished watching this video, leave me a comment below. That way I can get back to whatever it is that you had to say. For today's topic, I want to talk about something that has been brought to my attention multiple times on my platform on Instagram. I want to talk about why me pointing out anti-blackness in media, especially on Instagram, does not mean that I hate that whole entire movie or TV show. When it comes to being a student in learning how to identify anti-blackness in media, you have got to stop being so damn dramatic. You don't have to throw away an entire movie or TV show or whatever it is that you are watching or consuming just because you see anti-blackness in it. That's not what we're saying. What we're trying to get people to understand is that compartmentalization is the most important skill here. What that means is that you look at whatever it is that you're looking at and you are taking all the complexities of it in, you're analyzing it, and you're figuring out what things are good, what things are bad, and putting them respectively in their separate place. And the reason why this is important is because we need to understand how we can take both the good things and the bad things from whatever it is that we're consuming and use them in front by a constructive means. So if we're identifying that anti-blackness is the bad thing in media, that helps us to understand what disrespects us, what steals from us, what misrepresents us, and what things that we can avoid when it comes to us creating our own media. Because right now we're in the realm of the media that is created and portrayed majorly by the white supremacist. So when we as black people are creating our own media to enjoy, we need to look at the things that they did that disrespected us and not mimic the things that we have seen and have been regularly given to us. When we look at the good things, an example of that may be the storytelling or another example of that would be maybe some of the ways that the scenery or the ways that it was kind of set up and with the storytelling those things may have been important in trying to create a good product. So we need to take those things and those lessons and we need to apply that to our own media. It's really no different than being in a job. And you know, this is something you're not passionate about because maybe you as a black person, you don't like the culture. You think there's a lot of microaggressions or uh, you don't really like dealing with the people or what, or your boss may suck, whatever the case may be. But you're there to get some game so that you can take the things that you learn while you're at that job and apply that to a business for yourself and take those skills elsewhere. It's stuff that's transferable, right? So you want to look at media in the same light. Really, to be honest with you, identifying anti-blackness is no different than watching a movie and just liking some things and then not liking others. It's really no different than that. I mean, you rarely ever see a movie that is a perfect 10. There are certain things that just may not gel well with you. You may not like the actors or the actresses and the way they portray characters. You may not like the direction that the story went. You may not like the way that it's filmed, how dark it is. There are certain things that you may not like, but then there are certain things that you may love. But you don't just throw away the entire movie unless it's severely bad just because you see one bad thing. And so that's how anti-blackness works as well, too. It's really no different in that regard. We need to be able to put our emotions aside and look at what is happening before us. For the things that we watch in media that we can't enjoy, we need to use it as a piece to study, more so a case study at that. We need to look at these different movies and TV shows that we watch as case studies for how the white supremacist portrays us in media. And we can keep record of the things that we have seen. And these are pieces of evidence that we can use to show the climate of the media that exists today. 
And then in return, we as creatives can try to make a better media based off of the things that we don't want to see. And those who aren't creators can be supporters of that new media space that we as black people are creating to be able to be represented properly. One of the problems also with being this level of dramatic is you're not really solving the problem by just walking away from it. You don't solve problems by literally ignoring them. You have to address them head on. So in the case of seeing something that is anti-black, like you see something that creates an anti-black message, what you're basically saying is, this is a problem that I'm going to leave somebody else to deal with. Because if I walk away, I don't watch it and that type of thing, then it doesn't poison me. It doesn't hurt me. It doesn't make me feel bad about what I am seeing. But the reality is, is that you're leaving that problem for somebody else because it's not like these white supremacists are going to stop because you're not watching it because there's going to be a whole bunch of other people who are going to keep watching what you're seeing, including other white supremacists. So when it comes to black people, what we really need to do is use these as, again, studies so that we can create our own thing. And eventually we can move on over to the mediums and the, the spaces that we are creating that are authentically black and that don't portray us in a negative light. One of the constant complaints that I hear from people is that they don't like to watch TV anyway. They don't like to watch a whole bunch of movies anyway because there's a lot of negativity and a lot of the stuff that you see on television is toxic. They just give it that general label. And what I noticed is that people have a problem with micro thinking and not learning how to see the bigger picture. And that's where it's important to be pro-black. That's where pro-blackness comes in and it's actually beneficial to the way that we think about um, life and the way that we create our vision. The problem isn't the medium that you're using to consume these different things. The problem is who is creating these different things on this medium that we're consuming. So what I'm basically saying to you is a lot of people like to make the argument that it's better to read a book than it is to look at a television show. And the only way I actually would agree with that statement is on the basis that when it comes to writing books, especially if you are self-published, there's nobody who can really regulate what you do and do not say. And it's not as difficult to create these things independently as it would be on a televised media space. But outside of that, the actual medium itself can literally be used as an open canvas for anybody to portray what they want to portray on it. And then as a result, you consume those things. It's not really that much different between a television show and a movie and a book. So the what it leads to is this understanding that it's about who controls these different things, because you could even as an author have a traditional publisher who could see the messages that you're putting in there, especially if you let's say that you're writing about historical nonfiction as somebody who's pro black and you pitch it to a publisher. Maybe that publisher is off code. Maybe that publisher is white and they're not trying to get all that out there and trying to fund something like that. They are going to control it the way that they want to. And they are going to also take a cut from what you're creating as well in the same way that you see things in the televised space. So that's why I say that the medium itself is not really the issue so much as who controls things on that medium space. So when it comes to looking at these different pieces of work that the dominant society puts out, we need to use them as studies so that we understand what we're looking at and we're able to instruct other black people on what to look out for when they see the same things being done. Because ultimately, the dominant society is not really all that original. They have to steal from black culture in order to make a lot of their content. Or the other thing that they do is recycle the same shit over and over and over a damn again. So... 
a lot of times it's not even really original. So the stuff that you see right now, as long as they are in control, it's going to show back up. And so that's why it's important for us to not be emotional when it comes to looking at the different things that we see on television or on a big screen. People often ask me the question, well, if you always talk about anti-blackness, does that mean that you don't like it? I mean, what things do you actually like? So from that statement, they already have made the assumption that I don't like the movie or television show that I'm breaking down. When in actuality, I very much enjoy a lot of the stuff that I actually break down, but I know how to compartmentalize and look at the things that are bad and look at the things that are good. I do not allow the indoctrination that is in the movie, television show, whatever it is that I'm looking at to impact the way that I feel about whatever it is that I'm watching overall. I also do not allow it to make me brainwashed and justify that there are still agendas or negative tropes that are in whatever it is that I am looking at. And ultimately, I had to learn that the people who are asking me this question are searching for something. And most of the time it's black people because we're the only ones who want to get overly critical about people who are identifying negative things that are done to our community because we're so used to beating on our beating up on ourselves. But um, ultimately, these people ask me this question because what they're looking for is something to balance out all of the bad. I've talked about all this bad stuff. So now they want to hear about something that's good that shows that, oh, there. although you're talking about all the bad things, there are some good things that we have to hold on to. They want hope that the dominant society is still doing something positive to portray people in the black people in the light that we deserve to be portrayed in. We want to hold on to this idea that there is still some good in this area of activity known as entertainment where we are being misrepresented and disrespected. They want to know that there is still something good out there that maybe I, I'm hiding from my audience because I'm very negative. So they're trying to put the onus on me. They're trying to make it seem like I'm the one who has to prove that there are positive things and I only choose to speak about those that are negative. When in actuality, what I'm saying is, is that there are very few things on television, very, very, very few things on television that are even outliers that do not have any trace of anti-blackness in how they portray black people. They're, matter of fact, it is so minimal. It's got to be like one or two percent. I mean, I even in this moment can't even think of almost anything that doesn't portray black people in a way that's somewhat weird in some point or in some manner. There's always going to be something there because of the system that we live in. But my point is that it doesn't always have to be like that. And a lot of times it is. So I portray that because it shows you the climate of how bad the anti-blackness and the negativity is and how it it has complexities. There's uh, covert racism that exists. There's overt racism that exists as well, too. And then there's somewhat of a mix and there's a lot of deceit that's going on. So I point out all of these different things. And people somehow conflate that with me just hating every single thing that I talk about. So that's why I said that they're being dramatic. The other thing, too, is that as blurs, we have a responsibility to try to create better narratives in our own specific realm. So what I mean by that is there's a lot of comic movies, television shows, etc., that have this issue with there being a lot of anti-blackness, there being a lot of racism and that type of thing. And I feel that we have a responsibility to call those things out and talk about them. But there is a lot of capitulating to the dominant society that goes on in the blurred and the bleak community. And ultimately, that's problematic. But I think that we need to talk about why it happens. I think that a lot of us use these imaginative narratives to practice escapism. We try to run to our um, comic movies and worlds that um, 
try to create something that's so whimsical that, you know, these little agendas can be thrown in there and it can be explained away because of all the creativity that you could use with these different this different lore that you put out there. I mean, you know, we have, you know, different ways that we can escape from trying to address the racism and the anti-blackness that we see. And we ultimately could create a space that allows for creation to not have anti-blackness in it because these are things that we delve into regularly and i think that we as blurs need to embrace that and we need to really talk about these different things and how we can create a better space even for those who are not blurs to be able to enjoy content and not be from my perspective indoctrinated one of the reasons why you're going to want to get my book by the way is because i show you how to look at all these different things because ultimately, I would give the advice that it probably is best to not consume so much media if you are either off code or if you just have absolutely no knowledge of the way that white supremacy itself works. I would probably recommend that you lay off so much content because you haven't been taught how anti-blackness works, let alone how white supremacy as a whole works itself. So you're going to fall for a lot of the indoctrination. But although that sounds like a contradiction to everything that I said today, I'm still leaning on the point, which is that if you are somebody who is pro-black and you are a codified individual and you are somebody who is willing to get the game that all of us have to give, then it is would be okay then for you to continue to watch these different things because you are not going to so easily fall for the indoctrination that is put into a lot of the media that is put out there. So ultimately what I'm saying is, is that if you're somebody who is either on code or somebody who is willing to get the game from somebody who is on code and you're willing to learn, then I would say that it is okay for you to continue to watch media point out the anti-blackness and still enjoy it because you understand the complexity that is involved with trying to enjoy things, find joy in the things that you're looking at, while also identifying the things that are negative that need to change in the next space that we try to create. All right, y'all, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed what I had to say, and I definitely will have more to come, so make sure you stay tuned. Other than that, I will talk to y'all later. Peace.